I had the privilege of um, in learning something of iconography to to spend time with the icon of, of John the Beloved leaning against our Lord in the Last Supper. And it's uh, just here. You're very welcome to come and look a bit later. Um, it's part of the whole of the, of the mystery of the supper that was recorded for us in John's Gospel. And that whole movement of uh, Jesus giving of himself to give of himself with everything that he had, anticipating the passion that was to happen later that night. And as we live out that mystery of service and of self-giving, often as this uh, beautiful contemporary painting shows that the face of Jesus is reflected in our service. This is just a bit of a close-up of the icon. This look of Jesus upon our lives, to be captured by his gaze of love upon you, to know ourselves as the beloved. Augustine, St. Augustine was to say that your look, O love, O Lord, has made me beautiful. I remember my mother having um, already had myself and my brother for our third brother, her third child. Our mum experienced what we now commonly know as uh, postnatal depression and at that stage it wasn't really talked about very much. And she remembered to feel quite inadequate with Chris, even though she'd already had two of us boys. And there was one particular day, only in the last few years, she shared with me, where um, she just, it, it was an incredibly painful time. And she just felt so, um, no energy and absolutely no confidence in her mothering. And she had this little one that was looking to her. And she said, one day, Chris looked up at her into her face with this look that was like she was the most beautiful thing on earth. Little Chris gazed up at my mum with that love and that gaze that God would have for us, that incredible unconditional love and trust. Like it melted all the inadequacy in her own heart. It, It kind of broke something of the oppression that was hanging over mum and she's, she's to this day it's it's one of those touch touch point those what do you call them touchstone moments of, of encountering the love of God that she saw on the face of little Chris and Augustine says this too your look of love O Lord has made me beautiful and this this tender care being drawn to Jesus. And can you see that in the icon, they often, uh, the shape or the composition draws us into a meaning. So can you actually see that with the hands, it actually draws us like a circle. And what is it centering on? It's on the heart of our Lord. And we can see with the ear, one ear we can't see in the other one, because John models to us like Mary, what it is to be a disciple. It's to listen with the ear and the heart in such a way that it transforms our will and our behaviour. And we want to live our life close to the heart of Jesus. Everything leads us back to Jesus and in Jesus, everything leads back to his heart. So, just in conclusion, I'd like to now um, read a very short address from Pope Benedict just recently. But before I do, I've got another quote here. (laughs) Great painters have employed their finest gifts in depicting the face of Christ among his disciples, apostles in the scene of the Last Supper. But only the saints by their intensity of their love, can enter the depths of this mystery, leaning their head as it were like John on the Lord's breast. This was spoken by John Paul II to his priests on Holy Thursday. It's very appropriate as we're honouring St. Mary MacKillop and as we're also paying um, like a a deep um, appreciation and uh, as it were being introduced more deeply to 
to, to Mary uh, Glary, that we see that they animate the love of God and the mysteries of God with their lives in their living of it, the way that they continue to seek the Lord's face. So this address that I'm just about to finish with is that the Pope Benedict came um, in September 2006 to a, a shrine of the Holy Face in Menapella in, in Italy. So he kind of introduced it by saying, as the Psalms say, we're all seeking the face of the Lord. Let us seek together to know the face of the Lord even better. And in the face of the Lord, let us find this impetus of love and peace, which also reveals to us the path of our life. Again, go in peace that you may glorify the Lord with your life. Benedict says, I was thinking of the first two apostles who, urged by John the Baptist, followed Jesus to the banks of the Jordan River, as we read in the beginning of John's Gospel. The evangelist recounts that Jesus turned around and he asked them, What do you seek? And they answered him, Rabbi, where are you staying? And he said to them, Come and see. And that very day, the two of them were following him. They had an unforgettable experience which prompted them to say later on that we have found the Messiah. The one whom only a few hours earlier they'd thought of as a simple rabbi had acquired a very precise identity, the identity of Christ who had been awaited for centuries. But in fact, what a long journey still lay ahead of those disciples. They could not even imagine how profound the mystery of Jesus of Nazareth could be or how unfathomable, inscrutable his face would prove so that even after living with Jesus for three years, Philip, who was then one of them, was to hear him say at the Last Supper, Have I been with you so long and yet you still do not know me, Philip? And then the words that sum up the novelty of Jesus' revelation, The one who has seen me has seen the Father. He who sees me has seen the Father. As the Pope says, Yes, sisters and brothers, to see God it is necessary to know Christ and to let oneself be moulded by his Spirit who guides believers into the all truth. Those who meet Jesus let themselves be attracted by him and are prepared to follow him even to the point of sacrificing their lives personally experienced as he did on the cross that only the grain of wheat that falls into the earth and dies bears much fruit. This is the path of Christ, the way of total love that overcomes death. The one who takes it and hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. In other words, the one lives in God already on this earth, attracted and transformed by the dazzling brightness of his face. And this is the experience of God's true friends, the saints who, in the brethren, especially the poorest and neediest, recognize the love they recognized and loved the face of, of that God lovingly contemplated for hours in prayer. <laughs> for us, they are encouraging examples to imitate. They assure us that if we follow this path, the way of love and fidelity, we too, as the psalmist sings, will be satisfied with God's presence. This is the witness to us of Dr. Mary Glowry when she experienced that call after being engaged with the plight of the women and the children, particularly in India, she talks about that when she reflects about it later, that the drawing on her heart and the compassion that was the love of God within her was so strong that it was uh, as if she was brought face to face with Christ. In exactly what our Holy Father just says, that recognizing the face of God, especially in the poorest and the neasiest. The Holy Father um, says this, that which is the generation of those who seek the face of God? Which generation deserves to ascend the hill of the Lord and stand in his holy place? The psalmist goes on to explain, it consists of those who have clean hands and pure heart, who do not speak falsehoods who do not swear deceitfully to their neighbour. And therefore, 
in order to enter into communion with Christ and to contemplate his face, to recognize the Lord's face in the faces of the, the brothers and sisters and in daily events, we require, we require clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands, that is, a life illuminated by the truth of love that overcomes indifference and doubt and falsehood and selfishness, and pure hearts are essential too. Hearts enraptured by divine beauty, as little Teresa of Lisieux says in her prayer to the Holy Face, hearts stamped with the hallmark of the face of Christ. Your face, O Lord, I seek. Seeking the face of Jesus must be the longing of all of us Christians. Indeed, we are the generation which seeks his face in our day, the face of the God of Jacob. If we persevere in our quest for the face of the Lord to the end of our earthly pilgrimage, he, Jesus, will be our eternal joy, our reward and our glory forever. So as we uh, continue to enter into the Spirit and the gift and the graces of God in this conference, let's pray together and I'll pray. The, um, this is actually the, the blessing of the Pope Benedict, so I'm sure we can in, have, like, continue to extend that blessing. Um, we can mediate that to us now. So he says, I invoke the blessing of, of God upon you and upon all your loved ones with the ancient biblical formula. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.